Good evening and welcome to FRC Media News for Thursday, August 3rd, 2017. I'm Keith Tebow. This week we have details on the resignation of the director at Fall Rivers Marine Museum and we have an update on an event to honor Vietnam veterans at Battleship Cove. First, first let's check in with the headline news of the week. We bring in the digital news editor at the Herald News, Will Richmond. Will, thank you for joining us this week. Thanks for having me, Keith. You're welcome. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about the King Philip Mill. That has been in the news for quite a while, as you know, and many of our viewers know, the mill has been um, a, uh, a, a source of concern for residents of the South End as being a potential uh, fire hazard, as it's been vacant for quite some time. A developer has come forward, submitted plans to uh, renovate the project, actually started, but as of a few days ago or even today, there has been a hitch in their plans. Talk about it. Yeah, just as it seemed there was uh, some progress going on at the mill, it's all come to a halt. It appears that the city's, uh, the chairman of the city's historical commission, uh, and t uh, Tony Diaz has uh, sent a letter to the developers expressing his concern about the demolition plans. Uh, his claim is that um, they need to file their own demolition plans because the structure is on the city's register of historic structures. Uh, the sort of wrinkle in this is that the city had begun this process earlier this year and had gone through everything that needed to be done. The demolition could occur, but his claim is that because ownership is changing hands, they need to file a their own plan. The city's plan will not carry over. And the, the financial backers of this have said, we don't want to get in the middle of this. We're stepping back and, uh, you know, we'll see where this goes forward. And they were actually going to be starting uh, the demolition on the site. Um, as those of you who may have been following the story, the, the uh, proponent and the developer is going to be looking to create some, uh, some housing on that site. Uh, what's, I mean, what's the potential timetable here? It could be if the historical commission is correct. Again, the city disagrees with what the chair of the historical commission has said. But if he is correct, could be, what, later on this year at, at the earliest, correct, that uh, this could move forward? Yes, yeah, certainly they were hoping to sort of begin work on it uh, early, uh, later this year. But uh, the question is if they're going to want to even be involved at all anymore. Will they back out completely? Uh, you know, this was, there was a developer who purchased the site for $110,000. But this is the financial backers to that who are going to put in 38, the $38 million. Right. Uh, to make this happen so at this point um you know we're continuing to follow up with them we're expecting to hear more from the from those financial backers we believe on friday and um find out what their next steps are but certainly this like you just mentioned the city is disputing it uh the corporation council joe macy has begun drafting a letter with his opinion on the matter and we'll see uh we'll see where it takes us but i don't think we'll know for certain just how involved the uh the developers will remain until uh, later this week in the meantime the residents of the south end and those who have been supportive of this project still uh, are concerned about the fact that it is a a public safety hazard uh to that to that neighborhood which has been for quite a while and i know that uh state representative alan sylvia who represents the south end neighborhood association uh, expressed those concerns as well that you know we need to move forward to ensure that there's not a potential hazard in that area. So we will continue to follow and move forward on this as it progresses. Um, I know we've talked about the next issue before and on this uh, newscast, Will, the issue of uh, overdoses in the city of Fall River and the Herald News this week in a story by Brian Fraga has the uh, latest numbers for the city of Fall River, even though one overdose is one too many. At least uh, things to be appear to be trending in a positive direction in terms of the number of overdoses here in Fall River for July. Certainly, the, the good news is that the number is down from June, which was the uh, had been the highest month so far of 2017. July, we saw 61 overdoses as reported by the Fall River Police Department. This is down from 83 in June and even 72 in May. Um, so it is, you know, trending down somewhat compared to recent months. Of course, the bad news is that it's still on pace for being the second highest number of overdoses uh, in the last five years as well. So 
some yeah. good news, but still, uh, still a bit a problem to be dealt with here. Right. Uh, based on the story, through the first seven months of 2017, Fall River has seen 440 drug overdoses and 31 deaths. Last year, during that same period, 512 uh, overdoses. So numbers are improving, but again, and we've talked about this before, how staggering those numbers are um, in and of itself. It's just uh, those of us fortunate enough not to have uh, family members who have uh, fallen uh, into uh, the depths to become addicted to drugs. Uh, it, it's still a very startling number. And again, the Herald News has been um, up on that going forward. Um, this time of the year, we tend to, in the last few years, I believe last year uh, was the first time in the while that the state of Massachusetts did not have a tax-free shopping holiday. Governor Baker is looking to uh, resurrect that. Normally it's in August, which is one of the slower shopping months of the year. Um, has the Herald News at all done any um, uh, follow-up on this locally and how it could impact uh, retailers if this were to come into play? And again, it would have to happen relatively quickly if uh, this tax-free holiday happens in August. Sure, we haven't checked in with any retailers since. Uh, apparently we're having some technical difficulties with Will. Well, in the Gad will continue. Uh, all right, as to whether or not one would be included right. uh, this August or not, um, you know, retailers expressed that they were interested, they wanted one. Um, they certainly said that last year not having one, as you mentioned, caused some problems on their end. They didn't see the shoppers that they usually do. And certainly, you know, the, the overriding themes are. All right, well, we're having some technical difficulties. Let's see if they'll, they'll solve it. So um, obviously uh, you know, there's, there's others in the uh, northern part of the state as well that express concern about competing with tax-free uh, New Hampshire. Right. So, you know, a lot of the retailers like it because it brings foot traffic into their doors. The state, on the other hand, um, as you probably mentioned while we were having technical difficulties, is the state, state of course, will see a downturn in tax collections for that for that weekend, and that may impact the bottom line in terms of the state budget. All right, finally, before I let you go, uh, again, uh, this uh, week, I, apparently, I think it's tomorrow, is the 125th anniversary of the Borden murders. And I know that there's a lot of events happening in Fall River, including one we touched upon last week that the Herald News is, uh, is sponsoring. Uh, refresh people about your event and maybe give an update on some of the other events happening this weekend. Yes, so certainly tomorrow does mark the 125th anniversary, so there'll be all the reenactments going on over at the Lizzie Board in Bed and Breakfast on 2nd Street. Uh, we'll be there to provide full coverage of that. Um, there'll be additional uh, reenactments going on on Saturday as well as they look to capitalize on the anniversary. The city um, with the his Historical Society is doing some Lizzie-related trolley tours mm -hmm. on Saturday. Um, I do believe those required advanced ticket purchases, and the last I heard it was all sold out. So, um, you know, maybe you can run alongside the trolley if you wanted to be a part of that and didn't get a ticket. Um, our scavenger hunt in the city's parks, I Found Lizzie, is uh, going on through the weekend as well. And it certainly wraps up kind of a week of events and uh, different Lizzie-related happenings, uh, you know, as we hit that big 125th anniversary. Sounds good. All right, Will, what else is coming up at the Herald News over the next few days? Sure. This weekend, we uh, kind of take a fun look at summer jobs for teenagers. Uh, we've talked with uh, one, one teenager and his summer job, along with some employers and why they turned to teenagers to fill some jobs, as well as asked uh, some community leaders to step back in the time machine and uh, talk about their summer job experiences when they were a bit younger. So a little, uh, some lighthearted uh, look at uh, working in the summertime. Sounds good. All right, Will, thanks for joining us. We'll talk again soon. Take care. All right. Have a good weekend, Keith. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. Hi, I'm Lucy Cabral. My name is Steve Oliveira. I am Denise Pumaguaye. I saw our ad in the paper, and I've always been interested in do the, doing this because I had been directing and acting in theater. This has been a dream of mine since I was 15 years old. But, you know, I walk into the studio one day and, and check, check this out. What excited me the most was 
getting my hands into the equipment here. Um, to see the joy in people and being able to transmit it live. People can do a show and they can come on and say, hey, I think this is right, I think this is wrong. Uh, if that's your, that's what you're into. Don't be intimidated, come down, it's, it's a lot of fun. The, the staff here make it so easy, I, I can do it. And I love it, I absolutely love it. Be a part of our team, produce your own show, or volunteer at FRC Media. More at frmedia.org, or find us on Facebook. Here are some job descriptions on the latest taught jobs list from the Fall River Career Center. Maintenance Technician, Landings Real Estate Group, located at 4980 North Main Street, is seeking a full-time maintenance technician responsible for performing various maintenance functions and repairs to a resident apartment facility. Job number 9281392. Prep Cook. The Fall River Grill, located at 363 2nd Street, is in need of a full-time prep cook with experience as a dishwasher and food prep person, must be reliable and able to work as a team. Job number 9306051. Psychiatric Nurse Practitioner. Oleski Associates is looking for an experienced full-time psychiatric nurse practitioner to work in an outpatient facility in Fall River, which provides integrated behavioral health care to patients with addiction and co-occurring psychiatric conditions. Job number 9309174. People Incorporated, located at 4 South Main Street, is looking to fulfill the following full-time positions. Assistant Vocational Director, job number 929-3258. Lead Case Manager, job number 929-3254. The Fall River Public School Department, located at 417 Rock Street, is looking to fulfill the following full-time positions for the 2017 and 2018 school year. Grade two teacher, job number 929-5230. Technology teacher, job number 929-5221. For more information on these or other positions, visit frcmedianews.org or call the Fall River Career Center at 508-730-5000. Learn about the lively and diverse culture of Cambodia at Fall River's second annual Cambodian Cultural Festival. Activities will include a Cambodian fashion show, live music by the Fantasy Band, Cambodian dance, and a performance by a Khmer artist. The festival is hosted by Fall River's Cambodian American Rescue Organization, also known as CARO, a nonprofit organization that works to raise awareness of the Cambodian culture in our community. The festival takes place from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, August 5th at the Khmer Buddhist Temple located at 745 Highland Avenue in Fall River. Admission is free. For more information, call 774-955-6317 or visit cairo-inc.org. Welcome back. The recent merger of Battleship Cove and the Fall River Marine Museum has resulted in the resignation of Museum Director Maria Van. Battleship Cove Director of External Affairs Christoph Shea confirms to FRC Media News that Van resigned in July. Maria has decided uh, to explore other ventures uh, in her native New York. And uh, what's great is that her contribution was astronomical here. Uh, she transformed that museum. Um, I think anybody that's been there can see the difference over the past two years that she uh, was there. Um, it will not soon be forgotten, and we wish her the absolute best of luck in her new adventure. Do you plan on filling the position? Uh, not at this time. Uh, we're looking at a different, uh, couple different scenarios. Uh, you know, a part-time person, a full-time person, uh, but it's whatever fits with the, you know, the new vision of the institution. Heritage State Park on Fall River's waterfront is offering a summer-long art project for residents and tourists alike. Here's more with Donna Mata. 
One of our initiatives this year at Fall River Heritage State Park is participatory public art, and one of the ways that we're working on that is by creating a chalk art quilt out on the overlook looking at the battleships in the Taunton River. One of the ideas was to tie together different aspects of Fall River's history, and obviously textiles and the mills are a huge piece of that. And one way to do that, we thought getting everybody involved, was to do some public art. We started this this past summer, and it's been amazing. The response has been amazing. At one point, we had 20 missionaries here from uh, North Carolina. They were staying in Dartmouth, and they came by, and I asked them, are you interested in chalking at all? And they said, they jumped at it. So half of them were out here on their hands and knees quilting, and then we gave them stencils. We make all these stencils here. They're all just like old floor tiles that we cut up. Actually, if we see anything with a shape, we take hula hoops, we take uh, uh, anchors, all this other stuff. We just keep developing these uh, different stencils. So these kids handed them the, these tiles, and they filled the whole terrace here with with uh, different different tiles and different and it was amazing to watch these kids because everybody has a different concept some kids have to be very methodical and get all the colors in the same sequence others are trying to reverse the colors but here it is the 20 missionaries they did their quilting and at the end they took pictures of everything and then put them on the internet hashtag Jesus loves you well, who's funding this we are a state park, so it's everyone's tax dollars at work that keep us here in business. This is the first year, um, I'm sorry, this is the second year that I'm aware that we've had interpretive services back at the park for a little while. Um, the park is going to be open dawn to dusk, as always, through the season. The visitor center is open Monday, I'm sorry, is open seven days a week, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. through October 9th. More FRC Media News right after this. Today we have Cooper, he's a male, two-year-old Brussel. He is full of energy, loves to jump and play. He was a stray. He's very good with dogs. He loves to be with people. Uh, so if you want to come down and meet him, that would be great. So today we have Ginger. Ginger is a female. She is a Lotso Opso. She's 10 years old. Even though she is a senior, she still has a lot of pop in her and a lot of love to give. Ginger is good with kids and other dogs. So if you are looking for a new companion, um, please come down to 300 Linwood Street in Fall River and take home this beautiful girl. She's only been here for about a week. So we are trying to find her a good permanent home who's willing to give lots of love and attention for our sweet Ginger. Learn about the lively and diverse culture of Cambodia at Fall River's second annual Cambodian Cultural Festival. Activities will include a Cambodian fashion show, live music by the Fantasy Band, Cambodian dance, and a performance by a Khmer artist. The festival is hosted by Fall River's Cambodian American Rescue Organization, also known as CARO, a nonprofit organization that works to raise awareness of the Cambodian culture in our community. The festival takes place from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, August 5th at the Khmer Buddhist Temple located at 745 Highland Avenue in Fall River. Admission is free. For more information, call 774 955-6317 or visit cairo-inc.org. Welcome back. Vietnam History Day is the theme of activities to be held at Battleship Cove in Fall River this Saturday. Director of External Affairs Christoph Shea has the details. The most important part of this day is that we are honoring uh, veterans of the Vietnam War. They will receive free admission as we honor them here at Battleship Cove. Uh, we also have a great program set. There will be military vehicles here. There will be ammunition tables, uh, all relating to the Vietnam War. People will get to, uh, to learn a little bit about what caused the conflict, why the United States got involved in it. And uh, there will also be some fun programs for the kids. They'll actually get to decorate their own military helmet, uh, which uh, they actually, soldiers did during that period. They put graffiti on their helmets. So it's a great thing. They'll also get to make their own helicopter. And speaking of helicopters, we are actually um, 
renovating the helicopter, the Huey down there. So people will get to come out, they'll see the restoration in progress, and they'll also be encouraged to donate toward the cause. That'll do it for this week's edition of FRC Media News. You can catch FRC Media News Thursdays and Friday at 6 p.m. and online via our website, frcmedianews.org. For all of us here at FRC Media News, I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great week. We'll see you next Thursday.